Alrighty, on to mission three of Lifefall. This is going to be downfall. Um, there's only one issue I have with this mission, and it's the fact that at the beginning of the level where you're going, like, charging the front gates of the, uh, the actual ship, there's way too many strand shields, and they become kind of annoying to deal with. They kind of feel bullet spongy. And to take in, to put, like, to drive this point even, like, put more concrete, I guess, onto why I think that is, is because when you're first playing through this campaign, you're not going to have a strain weapon. Obviously, on repeat playthroughs, you can just run, like, maybe a Quicksilver Catalyst or, like, the submachine gun or later. You know, there's a bunch of options. But when you're first playing through this, you, these guys are really tanky for, like, no reason, and it's kind of annoying to deal with. But that's literally my only issue with the level. Aside from that, the mission's actually pretty great. Now, actually going into the mission, first off, the setting of the mission is amazing. I, I just really like going through these pyramid ships, and I really feel like this one was different from the other ones we've went through. So I think that also gets some bonus points, because you kind of see... They even mention the mission where like there's some of Callus still in here, but the deeper, deeper you go, you kind of lose that Callus feel. And I, I actually like that. I think that was really a nice, a nice touch. Now, we also have a Tormentor fight, and I actually think this Tormentor fight is a lot better than the first one back in the, the first mission we did. Because the arena is actually a lot bigger. So you actually have a lot of room to deal with this. Because in the first mission, there's not really that much room. But, like, in this mission, it's a big-ass room. So you can have, like, a, you have a bunch of free space to kind of dodge and weave around this Tormentor. Because this Tormentor... Because Tormentors are fast, man. They they charge you. As soon as you break those two shoulder pads, they're they're rushing you down. They have, like, the jump attack. And they when they go into their grapple mode where they try to grab you, they, like, I guess get faster or something. But... You have a lot more room in this, and I think it really adds to the fight. And the final point I kind of want to go over is that final arena at the end. The rest of the mission is fine. It it kind of it's it's really nice. It, it it the pacing of the mission is actually really nice. But the final arena is actually just it's the cream of the crop, honestly. It has you do like plates. You have to kill certain enemies to dunk balls. There's a lot going on, and it's actually pretty chaotic. And I actually really really enjoy it. I think I think also having Callus see like kind of look over the entire arena it adds to it adds to like the actual setting and then once you're done uh i think dunking the balls you get to play around with strand even more nothing different from the first time but you get to just it's a big place so you get, get to fool around with strand and then right as you're done you get to do this really fun sparrow section that just kind of ends off the mission and i think that's just it really it, it, it does a good job of doing it now on to the Witch Queen mission, the Ghost. Uh, this mission is probably the weakest so far out of the Witch Queen missions. This is the one where you have to shoot these little bulbs that, and then they'll glow in the dark. The actual mechanic is actually really nice. I, I think it's, it's pretty good. I think the biggest problem with this mission is it drags a bit. I think it, it overstays its welcome, honestly. Um, the times where you're actually doing the puzzle is, or like, puzzle i guess in quotations uh is is really fun to do but there's these in-between sections that just kind of they they get boring honestly they it drags a bit now regarding the actual light mechanic that's kind of like the intro for it it does a really good job of telling you what it does how to use it there are some sections where you don't need to use it but like there's like this jumping platform or puzzle i guess where it's like really really dark and the only way to see is if you shoot those bulbs. So I think it, gives, it does a good job of showing you um, how it works. I know I'm skipping a lot when it comes to this mission, but there's really nothing to really talk about. Um, the in-betweens of this mission are kind of just killing Scorn. And even then, the Scorn are not really interested in kill. There's the Scorn tank that shows up, and it's just not that fun to kill. Honestly, it's just it's just really bullet fungy. But where this mission actually shines is the final boss. Now onto what really shines in this mission is the final boss. The final boss is actually just like a dungeon boss, and I think that's really, really good. Like, it really, the flow of it just is amazing. Um, it's, it's literally just kill three captains, and then you have to shoot the crystals above them. And then that means you're done the section. And another little neat detail about this is there's these hive symbols around the, the little three sections you have to go through. Once you kill the captain and shoot the crystal, 
that hive symbol will go away until the next gate, so you know what sections you've been. I think that's a really nice touch to not confuse like the player. Now onto the actual boss himself. This guy will actually chase you down. He he will kill you. He'll find your family. He'll just murder them in front of you, because this guy is a melee guy, right? So he's gonna be he's bum rushing you like Mach 10 speed. He doesn't care. And he will chase you to the back of where those captains are, so you're really not safe from him. So you have to, like, play around him, and it actually really adds to the fight. Because there's this constant threat of, oh no, this guy could be swinging around the corner while I'm killing a captain, and just, GG, go next. Like, it could literally be that. So I think it really adds to the fight, and I think this, it, this, is, this is what really brings the mission up to not being a bad mission. I think this boss fight really saves this mission, honestly. On to the final verdicts, I think the Lifehold mission was actually in the great section. I think this one did way better than the previous two. I think this one's really good. I think this is probably maybe the best mission for Lifehold. I, I don't know, it, it's between 1 and 3. But um, And then for Witch Queen, I think this is actually going to go down to good. I don't think it's terrible like mission 2 of Lifehold. But I don't think it's great either. There's, I think the boss fight really carries this mission and the hunter fights between, or the one hunter section, I guess, helps it a bit. So I think that really solidifies it going into good instead of bad. But that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys on mission four. Catch you guys next time.